When I got here, he like, then you got here for real, huh? I say, yeah, and he like, all right, wh where are you gonna stay? I say, what do you mean? I'm gonna stay here in your gym. He like, you're not gonna leave my gym. So he opened his house, man, for me, you know, and he put me with his wife and his two years old kid. And I live with him for like six to seven months. The All-Star app, the number one app in the business. UFC, Bellator, One Championship, PFL, and more. Get the app right now. Link in description. I love your story because I was looking at your uh, Instagram and the, the first post, it says that you left Brazil with your suitcase yeah. and $80. And a few years right. later, you're fighting for the UFC. Just tell me about going through that whole process, man. Man, that was crazy. Uh, that was exactly four and a half years ago. You know, uh, I left to Brazil. I was a two and two as a fighter, MMA fighter. 23 years old. I was coming from two loss, you know. And I I moved to America. I said that's my last shot, you know, like. Because you get a point when you are young like that and you keep losing, you have to decide what you want to do. So I said, I'm going to give everything I have. So I moved here to, to Orlando, Florida. Um, you know, I met my coach, Julian Williams, for the second time because what happened, actually, I'm going to go back really quick. I was in, in Portugal. And then me and, one, me and my best friend, Diego Silva, who is an MMA fighter as well. We texted Julian on Instagram because we saw Ronaldo Jacaré and Alan Oguet train here. But we we all supposed to go to to uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, train at Jackson Week. We all planned to go there. But we saw Jacaré and Alan Oguet train here. So we messaged Julian and talking about come to train at Fusion. And Fusion was really, really small gym, you know. It was just like a year and a half, two years. But Julian have a background in MMA for a long time. Been fighting since 2008, you know. And amazing coach. But we texted him and he like, yeah, you can come train for me, but I don't have place for you guys to stay, nothing like that. And I was like, all right, man. So Kevin Gasoline and Jacare, he they had lining event in Brazil, Rio. So Phil, Julian, they went to Brazil and they we met on the wings. I have no English, no nothing. So we all just Google translation talking, trying to figure it out. And I told them, I said, look, we're gonna be there in in, in two, three months. And they like, all right, cool, cool. They don't believe because he told me after, he said, after Jacaré, Elon get to come and start training, they got a lot of messages from people from different states here, texting him, say, oh, they want to come to train, but never can. So he like, yeah, you guys in Brazil, you guys have no money. Like, all right, cool, you want to come, come, but you don't believe. So that was around like me. And in October, I fought... Um, I found one event, a kickboxing event, and then I say, oh, it's time. So I bought my chicks, I packed it, and I left. When I got here, he like, Dan, you got here for real, huh? I say, yeah, and he like, all right, wh where are you going to stay? I say, what do you mean? I'm going to stay here in your gym. He like, you're not going to leave my gym. So he opened his house, man, for me, you know, and he put me with his wife and his two years old kid, and I live with him for like six to seven months. And then I moved to, to, to another house with a good roommate. Then I met my, today's my wife, but I met my girlfriend back there. And then that, things, is, uh, things start to work better, but basically that's exactly what happened. But I got here for nothing, $80 in one suitcase. My first day here, I was paying house, but it's all good. Man, you, you have some good people around you. It's so important, yeah. right? That, bam. So blessed, you know. Yeah, incredibly blessed. And uh, March twenty fifth, man, you get to you get to fight again. You get your second trip into the octagon, San Antonio, full arena. Yes. So you get to fight in the front of a crowd. Steven Peterson, how do you feel about the matchup? 
I love the matchup, you know. I love it. I like the the idea. He's a he like to brawl. He like to come to fight, and I like to fight. You know, I love to fight. You know, and one thing I know how to do well is fight. Been fighting my whole life since I was 15 years old. You know, I can uh, I have 10 pro fights as MMA, but I have over 100 fights as a amateur kickbox. You know, I fought a lot in Brazil. We fought a lot on the mats. We fought a lot in the ring. So I love to fight, and I'm very excited to actually be able to to have a full camp. You know, I was good to have a full camp training and have a whole game plan and i'm excited for the fight man i can't wait it's almost there what do you think about uh his striking style you know he's a brawler but you know he's in the ufc so it, he has some skills he does have some skills you know you have to respect that you know uh he he strike it's i feel like it's almost awkward for him for everyone who fighting him but match perfect for him if that makes sense you know fits perfect it's the type of guy it's dangerous you have to respect you know you have to be locked in you have to be focused you cannot be late for a second and i'm the type of fighter who don't try be lazy who always folks there all the time you know even when my last fight you know i i slapped in a kick and, and my opponent he absorbed the opportunity and perfect. He got a choke and he won the fight. But leaving it before that happened, I was lucky and I was seeing everything, every punch he threw. And everyone so scared to fight him, you know. He's the boogeyman, the, the weight the way class. Just because he looks scary and he punched hard, you know. Like, things like that don't scare me. Like, I love the type of thing because help me keep my mind focused. When I fight, a, when I have to go fight a guy who no look too dangerous, that's how the problem happened too. You know, you get too comfortable, you think you already won, and things like that, and bad things can happen. So I, I respect Steve as a fighter. You know, he's having 29 pro fights, very experienced. Uh, so he he's there for a reason. You know. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting matchup. You know, especially with your striking background, and he's just gonna come forward and throw bombs yeah. at you and you have to figure yeah. it out right it's like a puzzle yeah yeah i don't feel like he's just gonna come in crazy and then throw punch you have to thinking about the phones the gloves you have to respect and you cannot just run through someone like that if he does he's gonna get hurt for sure but uh i definitely think he's gonna bring the fights and i'm gonna bring the fight to him and we're gonna fight you know or he's gonna push the pace so i'm gonna push the pace so we both we're gonna respect each other and try make it clear we're gonna find out Let's talk about your UFC debut last October. I believe less than a week notice, you step in. You know, that's a crazy, crazy thing to do. But you did it and you got your opportunity. Take us through the whole week of just like be, have to go through all of that stuff. Yeah, I man. A lot of people have no clue how it's a short notice week for someone to get a fight like that, you know. Um, I, I'm going to say one thing and I, I'm very, very, very... Uh, how can I say? Grateful. I'm going to put it that way. For some Shelby, done White, to have seen, to give the opportunity to, for me to change my life, for me fighting in UFC and have the name. But the short notice thing, that doesn't work well. That's not good for a fighter. But I'm not ungrateful. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to put it that way like, oh, so why you you complain? Like, give to someone who won. No, I don't say that. I want that. That's why I took but it's unfair, you know. You don't get the opportunity. Like, my, this camp, I've been sleeping and wake up thinking about one thing. Stevie Pettis, I'm going to fight him. You know, when I got the call, I was with my wife and changed my phone, chilling. I just have a full meal. And then my, my, my friend, Phil Rowe, called me. Yo, what are you doing? I say nothing. He said, how much you weigh right now? Uh, so, uh, I mean, 163, 164, my weight's not too high, I'm good. And he's like, okay, so start to cut weight, you're going to fight next Saturday. But what? Yeah, yeah, call, call, call Abra. He needs to send all documentation things. I say, okay. I talked to my man, he said, please, send me your documentation. I sent documentation, I sent in my email. Bro, so much paperwork. 
so much easier. I don't have have to do last minute. You know, yo, you have to send this. What's your size? Oh, where are you from? Oh, you need documentation from Brazil, from the police. Oh, uh, where you live before? Oh, you need to do your tax, this, and this. And then they're like, yo, you need to make appointment for your exam, you know. So the whole week was really hard because I still have to cut weight. I still have to train, but I didn't have the time. I, arrived, I remember I, I, I flew to Vegas at 6 a.m. in the morning from Orlando. I got to Vegas at 12.45. I didn't went back to my hotel until 7 p.m. The guy picked up me in the airport. I didn't see my coach. My coach flew in different flight with And he got to the hotel. He texted me, where are you? I said, bro, I'm doing exam. I did like 67 different exams. And then Wednesday, wake up early, get the bag, go do the interviews, broadcast, go do the photos. You know, I'm not complaining, but... I didn't have the, the time to think about my opponent, you know. I don't have the time to think about even weight cut. But I was very disciplined. I make way. I, I cut away five days, you know, Sunday through through, uh, through Thursday. But uh was really not was stressful. I think I took it nicely because I was no nervous, no nothing. But was really like, catch, catch, catch. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And... When you are fighting, you don't want to fight weak like that, I feel like, you know. You want to keep your fight weak, like, focus, laser. So, that's exactly what was it. Yeah, it's understandable, you know what I mean? Like, I talk to other fighters, same situation as you. You know, you get a call on Sunday or Saturday, and they want you to fight the next weekend. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? You go through so much. But you went through the crazy storm. Now, this fight week coming up is going to be easy for you, right? It's going to be simple. Yeah. I'm chilling, man. I can't, <laughs> wait. I can't wait to fly and stay in Texas and chill in Texas, you know? Yeah. Now, I did everything I have to do already. Now, I just need to go there, do my interviews, and that's it. Make way and fight. Ready to go. After that fight, how were you, like, physically? You didn't have no injuries or anything like that? No, no. Actually, my knee was bothering me, but I checked it out. I have nothing, you know. I I heard that. I think I heard that knee when I felt, but I checked it out. It was nothing. It was just uh, same thing in my cartilage, like an inflammation. So I recovered well. I was fine after the fight, you know. I take no damage, no nothing. How did you feel mentally? Did you feel like, you know, after you went through all of that and 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 you didn't get the win, like motivation wise, did it change for you? I felt I felt annoyed, you know. I was no was sad, but more annoying because I know I could do better, you know. But I respect what I'm a religion person, so I respect what what is supposed to happen, you know. So, uh, how can I say? Same, it's something more powerful than me. So, but I was just annoying and. I knew I had to work it through that mentally to go to the next fight. You know, that's why, even if it's funny fact, I was in Brazil for the card on January 21st, and my opponent was sitting right in front of me, you know. And I talked to him nice, we talked, and I don't have nothing against him, you know. I, I don't have the, like, anger in my heart, I like nothing, but I definitely... Um, I work it mentally to to get over if that that feeling just like ah, fuck could do better you know and that's not good it will bring that to the next fight it's gone it's right in the past so we just move forward. Your training camp is at Fusing Excel with Coach Julian, a phenomenal coach. Who are your training partners for this camp? Ooh man, oh my gosh! So here's the funny fact: I, this whole time here at Fusion, I never trained. Uh, people's in my weight class, you know, I was trained above, so Julian's my partner, you know, Phil helped me a lot, I know he's 17, he's a big guy, but I love the way Phil boxing and his hands and his feet, so that helped me keep it sharp, you know, uh, I have David Zona who helped me too, amazing on 145, uh, but he's a, he used to be a 55er, uh, Mike Davis helped me as well, you know, Beast, the guy's different, He's going to be a champion one day, definitely. And uh, so many, man, so many. We, we have, here at Fusion, that's the cool thing about Fusion, you know. We have so many guys, it's like 7-0, and 8-0, you know, just waiting for the call to go to UFC as well. 
you nobody he heard about them. And they like black belt jiu jitsu, you know. They like gold gloves and and and, and boxing. They 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 they, they, come, they have a, a like D one wrestlers and things like that. And, they, and people never heard about them, but they are so good. So all these people they help me so much here in the camp. Do you do you work with anybody outside of Fusion XL? Do you work with different? Oh, coaches? I do. Yeah, I I met. Uh, Phil, uh, the, back in December, when Phil was camp to, uh, on the camp for fight Nico Price, mm -hmm. uh, I was 24 7 with if you feel for the camp. We glue really well. And he took me to one uh, his first coach, Dominique. It's uh, like an hour away from here, Daytona Beach. He's a Muay Thai coach over there. And he's very a knowledgeable guy, you know, and have a. He trained before uh, Cowboy Sehorn, Paul Fader, Horn there. So he have the, the, the coach, you know, experience. So I watched him working for Phil and then we met, we trained together and glue right away, you know, like when I strike, met another coach striking, they glue it, something good can happen. So I've been doing my full camp, two with for him twice a week. I go there training for him, you know. So it's been really good. You know, I can't, I'm excited to show one thing like being a kickbox and make a transition to Muay Thai is the inside game, you know, the knee, the elbows, the time, you know. So, like, a lot of people think, like, look at me, think I just can't fight outside because I'm long reach and I'm taller. And they're like, oh, get close to him, you have to get close. And then they come inside, they're like, oh, that's that's different. You have your knees, you have elbows. And I say, yeah, I've been working that. So, I'm excited to actually have the, the, the extra toes, you know. What do you envision for this fight? What do you see in your mind of how you're going to perform? Uh, man, I, I see a good night for myself, you know. Uh, I'm in good spirit. Uh, I feel good, man. I'm excited. So I feel like it's going to play really well. Uh, I've been visualized a lot. One of the main things I do, everything good, everything bad. Uh, every scenario can happen. But uh, I also see... The fight playing really well, you know. I mean, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get opportunity to show, show my skills, thing, um, things I've been working on, and actually who I am, you know. I know I'm gonna be a, a lot of people's there, a lot of eyes on the fight, especially for Steve. He been a UFC fighter for a long time, and they know his style. So the people's a lot of people's curious about me. So I'm gonna give them, you know, what what they want. March 25th, UFC San Antonio. Lucas, it's going to be an incredible fight. It's an incredible matchup. Everybody go in the descriptions, download the All-Star app. I'm going to make sure the $10 for the ESPN is going to be worth. And also, I'm going to make sure the money for the chicks is going to be worth as well.